What an honor and a privilege it is for me to stand before you this evening. You're an encouragement to me. We need ladies to help in congregational evangelism. My husband always says we are the key to create an evangelistic atmosphere. If we don't do it, nobody else will. The Lord is depending on us to do our part. The foundation of congregational evangelism can be found in our six-step model. I want to introduce you to some of the ways that you, as women, can help in congregational evangelism. We all have a role to play, and we need to use our talents. We can be involved from the youngest to the oldest. Where will you fit in this model? The first ingredient under contacts could be door knocking. Door knocking reaches those who are unchurched and those who we do not know. In Revelation 3.20 it reads, Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If any man hear my voice and open the door, I will come in to him and will sup with him and he with me. I realize, ladies, that this is probably one of the hardest things that we do when it comes to evangelism. Um, Rob always gets on to me because when we go to the door, I have a tendency of wanting to hide. I don't want to be seen. <laughs> so he's usually pulling me out um, because he's, he says, Nicole, they're not going to come to the door if they just see me. They've got to see you as well. So I always try to step out, but it is. It's not very comfortable, but I realized that the years of doing it, um, that if we do it um, effectively, it does work. Um, one of the things that we have learned through the years is when we go door knocking, we can't do it like we did it in the 50s, 60s, and 70s. It just doesn't work today. Um, and then that's where we hear uh, a lot about door knocking doesn't work. It does if we do it right. Um, I remember when we first started doing this, it was just, it was like a game to see how many doors we could knock and, and uh, how many people we talked to. But nowadays, when you go door knocking, you may be at a door for an hour because they are wanting to talk to somebody. And if you listen to them, you're going to stay there a while. And uh, so things have changed in our culture. Um, I know for many years um, when we would door knock um, in Hillsboro and Poole and Willette, um, you know, um, we would always do what we commonly would do. We would go invite people to services or to a gospel meeting. Um, and then we would get back, we were exhausted from being out all day in the hot sun. And then we would go to services on Sunday morning and nobody would show up. Well, that was very discouraging. And I think that's where a lot of this door knocking doesn't work because we weren't seeing those results. And so um, one way that we have learned a lot, um, we started the American Mission Campaign um, that we do here in the States. This was started in 21, uh, right after COVID. Austin Fowler came to us and said, um, why can't we do um, the things that we do overseas? Why can't we do it here in our own country? And Rob and I had been back and forth, back and forth, and talking about it, but we weren't sure how well this was going to work because we'd been doing a lot of foreign mission work in Jamaica. And uh, so when the idea came up, we said, okay, well, let's try it. Because all the doors had been shut in the foreign mission fields. And so um, our first one was in 21. Um, we did it in Rome, Georgia. And we had about 100 people from all over come and help us. And one of the things that we do is we train you how to door knock. And we have different techniques that we teach you um, every day. And, um, and so we don't just go to the door and invite them uh, to um, a gospel meeting because they don't know our speakers, they don't know us, um, or invite them to services. We have a specific need when we go to the door, um, what we're going to talk about for that day. And so um, this has taught us a lot. 
Um, when we go door knocking now, we have a 33 percent uh, rate of people coming to the doors and us talking to them. Um, when we uh, did our first one in Rome, Georgia, we had, I felt bad because we were learning, we had a stack of contact cards for them. I don't even know how many we had. I didn't even go through them. I just kind of handed it over to the elders and I thought, oh, I can't do that again. So the next year when we went to, um, uh, let's see, that was 21. In 22, we did uh, Covington, Tennessee, and then we went over to Knoxville, Tennessee. And I'll never forget when we were in Knoxville, um, we had a we had a, a about, about 300 contacts, and the elders looked at Rob and says, "Can we do something else? We've got so many contacts. It's going to take us years to go through all these." <laughs> so they because they told us just like everybody else, door knocking does not work. They are overwhelmed when they see that it does work. And, um, and uh, so um, we had a lot of success there as well. Uh, and then this year we went to two places. We went to uh, Cary, North Carolina, and we went within a, a mile radius, and we probably got about 250 to 300 contacts. Um, and then we, and then uh, that was in June, and in July we went to Cleveland, Texas, um, and had about the same results there as well. And I'll tell you more about about that um, as we go through the uh, lesson tonight. Um, and next year we are planning to do two more: uh, one in June in Collinsville, Illinois, and in July we're going to be going to Hampton, Virginia. I'm kind of excited about the Hampton, Virginia, because um, we let them choose uh, some things that they can do for their local community. And all, most of them, except for ones, Carnes, we did a back-to-school backpack drive, um, and we learned a lot from that. Um, and then most of them have been community meals. And so, but they chose to do a, a, a vacation Bible school. So we're very excited about that one um, because uh, we, we're excited to be able to get in there with the uh, local members and help them do a vacation Bible school in that area. And so these are just uh, uh, ways that you can learn how to do it. Uh, when we uh, go door knocking, one of the things that we do is we will always take our house to house and the back page is yours. And if you're having a meeting or if you're we like to do um, like our vacation Bible school or if we're doing a community meal. Whatever we're doing for the community, we want to advertise it on the back of our house to house. Um, that way we know that it's getting into the homes. Uh, and then we like to hand deliver it to them by going door knocking and personally inviting them. Uh, we see much more success when we do it that way as well. Um, and of course, um, House to House always does um, the annual door knocking campaign uh, uh, in the first uh, Saturday in October. And we were able this year uh, to go back to Coweta, uh, Oklahoma. Uh, we had done the seminar two and a half years ago, and, and uh, they asked us, said, well, you're going to be in the area. Can you help us door knock? So we stayed and helped them door knock, and from that door knocking, uh, we, the, uh, one of the young couples um, that went out with us, um, they knocked on to this other young couple's door, and uh, they were there that Sunday with their children, and they are now Christians. And so it does work, ladies, and uh, as I said, people are longing to talk. <laughs> And so if you just show them any kind of interest, it's amazing uh, uh, what you learn from people. And, uh, and, and, and now congregations are being more believers in it uh, in, instead of being um, not, not a believer in it. Um, but there, you can also find out more uh, on the YouTube channels. Uh, Rob does several um, little five minute things about a lot of our works and uh, you can uh, look at that as well. 
uh, to learn how to do it more effectively. And then while we were at Willette, as I said, we would go door knocking at least once a year and we would hand deliver our house to house. We came across Gary Williams and invited him to our services. He came one Sunday and we found out that he was an early member. Um, he had been away from the church for over 20 years. Rob and Nick Jones studied with him using the wooden one method study, Does It Matter? He then asked to be restored. We would have never found Gary if we did not knock on his door. Door knocking reaches those who are cold contacts. The second ingredient in the model under contacts could be new movers. You might think, well, what is new movers? Do y'all do new movers here? Okay. Well, this is something that um, House to House provides. Uh, it's a service that you can get involved in. The elders will learn more about it tonight as well. Uh, we have learned that this is a very effective way to get to know those who have recently moved into our area. And one thing that we have learned about new movers is if we're the first ones to reach out to them first, they're going to be more likely to visit with us than wherever they went in the last town they lived in. You have an average of 32 that move each month into this area. So that just kind of gives you an idea. People are moving. <laughs> and, um, and so that way, if the elders do decide to do this, that way you'll kind of have a know uh, of how many that will be moving in. And one thing, I, had no, I didn't know anything about the new movers. This was something new when we started uh, working with House to House. Um, I said, well, we need to, you know, what can we do? How can we reach out to those that have moved in? So what I did was I went to the local Dollar Tree and I started uh, getting some items and, and putting a basket together because I, I don't ever like to go to a door empty handed. Um, so if you give them a gift, um, it, it, it's more positive that way as well. So I knew that. So um, I, that's what I did, and I thought, well, this is an excellent way for us as ladies uh, to get together and put these baskets together uh, and have them assembled for when the time is that we get um, our, our monthly uh, new movers list. And this is, this is the type of basket, it doesn't matter, you know, you can get any kind of basket. Um, in, in your packet, I give, I give you a list of three options. And I gave you three options because I had typed this up when COVID. So I was having a hard time finding some of these products. So I want to make sure uh, to give you some options. I'm going to show you option one, the cleaning supplies. Option two is household items, and option three is food items. And um, so um, I get things and put in a basket like toilet bowl cleaner, a toilet bowl brush, kitchen cleaner, a bathroom cleaner, paper towels, Clorox, dishwashing soap, paper towels, and lastly I try to put some kind of um, wipes or rags or something in there, um, but I have heard that you ladies make uh, some um, crochet or knit some uh, washcloths or you can make some cleaning rags. That's an excellent way, ladies, to get together, make these, and have them ready for this basket because I'm telling you um, that when we, the, if they see that you put some effort into this, they're going to really know, hey, they truly care about me. Um, and so uh, we get these items and then we, we assemble these bag, uh, baskets. So that, as I said, 
um, you'll have them ready. Um, also, you want to make sure that you put a packet, and I've seen a packet that y'all have out there, something similar to this. It has all the information about the congregation, the times of services, uh, things like that. Uh, you can put your house to house in there, whatever it is. Um, but make sure that they know where um, this basket is coming from. Um, also, we like to get um, information from our local businesses like uh, things that would be uh, useful for a new mover, a mechanic, a plumber. Uh, get there a, a doctor, um, somebody that you know and trust. Because when somebody moves in, it's very hard to know who you can trust. And so we like to give them a little bit of a heads up to say, oh, well, they've got a card, so maybe I will check them out. So it not only helps them, but it also helps your local businesses as well. Um, also, um, when you go to the door, um, you're going to have the name of the person. Please, ladies, do not go to that door and address them by their name. They do get very offensive, like, how do you know my name? Uh, it's just not a good um, approach. Um, my children, this is the, one of the works they, they really enjoy doing. Uh, children are very good at this. <laughs> Uh, this is something that a lot of congregations um, will get their children to do this on a Sunday afternoon um, because that is the uh, day that's more effective because more people are home on a Sunday afternoon and that's when my children go and, and deliver um, the baskets. And um, so um, they learned, they came back to us and said, Mom, we can't be addressed by their name. They want to know where we're getting this information. So what we encourage you to do is just go to the door, uh, tell them who you are, where you're from, say you've just recently, you've heard they've recently moved into the area and we would like to give you a gift. It goes so much smoother when you do it that way. Um, so um, that's just a little tip that we try to give to y'all so that you don't get discouraged when you go to the door. Um, if you get a good response, and I'm, I'm, what I mean by a good response is if they say, oh, we're looking for a church home. Well, you know that, hey, this is, this is somebody that we can start prospecting. Uh, and so you bring that, lit, that name back to whoever's going to be in charge of this list because you want to make sure they get on this list and you as a congregation start sending them cards welcoming them to the community um, because they've already got a basket but they're the more we can get our foot in that door uh, the more likely they will come and visit with us and uh, also um, do y'all have gated communities in Chapel Hill okay I know some places do and I always tell them if they do don't ever force your way into those um, areas <laughs> <laughs> because I have heard of people say, oh, we just like to go in right behind somebody else. Please don't do that. <laughs> because we don't want the church to get a bad name. So if that was the case, and, and if there may be a time that you do get that, that um, and you still want to um, give them a gift, we, we suggest giving them a gift card to a local restaurant, a uh, local um, home improvement store, as something as well, because we don't want to forget them as, as either. Um, also, one thing um, that we're learning uh, in the field, because uh, because the, the list is not 100% accurate. Uh, what I mean by that is um, you may get an address, and it may be taking you to a piece of property, a piece of land that somebody has bought. And my children are like, Mom, we just went to a piece of land. <laughs> and so, so now uh, one congregation that told us what they do to prevent that uh, is they actually go on Zillow and type in the address and see if it is actually a new mover. And then when they do that, they're getting 100% accuracy. Um, another reason uh, thing that we were learning too is when the children, our children were going out, they would say, well, we've lived here 35 years. 
why am I on a new movers list? So I finally, they said, we don't understand, Mom. And I said, well, why don't you just finally ask them? If somebody says that, ask them why they think that. And so they got the nerve to do that one time. And, and they said, well, we did just um, pay off our mortgage. And so evidently, when somebody pays their house off, they immediately go into the new movers. And so that way, um, you might be able to fix that too. Um, is they would not on Zillow, you know, if you type in the address and it hasn't been on the market, you're going to know that's really not a new mover. So that helps. That helps as well. Um, doing that. Uh, let me introduce you to Miss Kim Bullock. Um, when she first moved to Jacksonville, uh, she had received a new movers edition of House to House. Um, and so uh, she got it and of course it has all our information so she called uh, the church secretary and um, she said you know she had just moved in she didn't have a way to come to services would there be someone that would pick her up and, and uh, Ms. Deborah said sure we'll get some of the ladies to come and start picking you up and so we did um, and started picking her up and Miss Deborah immediately got one of our baskets and took it to her um, and introduced herself and, and I think Deborah was one of the first that started going picking her up. Well not only did, did she receive this in the mail but she also a couple weeks later they're going to get a postcard from House to House welcoming them as well. So as you can tell they're getting a lot of um, mail from the church and so um, um, and, and it's got all our information on it so that's what helps us um, um, with people that move into our area they get th these type things um, but anyway when she moved in as I said we started picking her up um, getting to know her taking her out to eat and of course we found out um, that uh, she was an erring uh, member of the church. She had been away from the church for many, many years. And so of course we used the one method study, uh, does it matter, because she needed to be reminded of her first love. She was then restored and is now a faithful member of the church. The third ingredient under contacts could be doing some kind of community outreach to let your community know you care and where you are located. We should try to develop favor in our community. In Acts 2, 47, it reads, Praising God and having favor with all the people, and the Lord added to the church daily such as should be saved. Now, at Jacksonville, we would do three meals a year. Um, we would do the shrimp roll, the big pig day, and then we would do the hot dog days of summer. Um, and so the community knew that we, we provided these meals so um, they would come out. Um, but one thing we had to do is when you do a, a, um, a meal for, some, uh, for the community, because I know a lot of times I hear it, how do you know how much food to prepare? That's the biggest concern uh, with any, any of these things that we do. And uh, when we were in Cleburne, uh, uh, Texas, we, we, of course, one day, every day we were inviting people to our, our meal. And we kept numbers. As you can tell, Rob is a very number person. <laughs> and so we thought, okay, we're going to figure out, you know, how many invites it's going to take to get people to come to our meals. And so... We had given out, I think it was like 893 invites. Ladies, 89 people showed up to that meal, 10%. So that just kind of gives you uh, a little bit to kind of know how to know how to uh, prepare for your meals. Um, I was not prepared for that <laughs> because the other meals that we had done on the American Mission campaigns we had the, I think we had like maybe seven the first campaign, and then the next one we were excited we had like 15, and then the next one we had 25, and we were so excited. But then when we went to Cleburne and we actually had 89 show up, 
wow, that <laughs> I wasn't prepared. I had gifts for them, but I didn't have enough, and I was embarrassed. <laughs> so, but that just kind of helps you uh, know uh, how many invites it's going to take to get people here. Because you, you, whenever you do something for them, um, you need to make sure you advertise it properly. Because you don't want to prepare all this food and then nobody show up. Um, so um, at Jacksonville, of course, we had, they made up postcards for us to go out and deliver to our neighbors and our friends who were not Christians. And so, um, so either way, you know, this just kind of helps you um, to know how much food. Uh, I was nervous because we probably, with the membership and the American mission campaigners, we probably had a good 200, 250 people there. And so I, was, I kept thinking, are we going to have enough food? <laughs> but we did, and it all worked out. And from those 89 that showed up on that Saturday evening, 20 of them showed up on Sunday morning for services. So we were very, very impressed with those numbers as well. And since then, they've had several baptisms uh, because uh, of um, the campaign. Um, one thing is we must strive to have a good reputation um, uh, for those in our community. Um, you know, like I said, some people um, may do a back-to-school backpack drive, and we did that. Uh, with the congregation at Carnes, and, and uh, we experimented with it to see, okay, how can we have a better success with this? Because, you know, a lot of times we would give out backpacks, but we were never getting contacts, were we? So we thought, okay, how can we do it more effectively? So what we did was we um, had them come into the building. Um, we had people uh, talking to them getting to know them, and then the teacher and then some of the students would be in the classroom uh, waiting for them to come. And then that way the teacher could get to know the student, uh, get to know the parents, get their contact information, because that's what we need. We need their contact information so that we can start inviting them to other things as well. And so, and then, and then after that, they would take them into give them a little snack or something, and, and more people would get to know them as well. And so that way, um, we're not just giving out backpacks to be giving out backpacks. We're actually getting that information from them. And we've had much success when we've done it that way. So whatever that we do, whether it's a back to school, a community meal, a clothing giveaway, the main thing is when we're doing that is we need to have some, some ways of getting their contact information from them. Um, our community needs to know that we care about them. We had a whole family obey the gospel from coming to one of our meals. We would have never met them if someone uh, had not invited them. Um, as I said, um, when we had never really done this, um, when we were in full-time work. So we were uh, very excited when we got to do our first one, and we just kind of sat back just to kind of watch and observe and see how um, things were going. And, and they did a great job. You know, the members were uh, talking to everybody, getting to know them and, and things. And, and so, but we weren't getting that information we needed. So the next meal that we did, we decided, well, let's, find a family that we don't know, sit down with them, talk to them, get to know them, uh, and get that information from them. Um, and, and we found that, that to be more successful when we did it that way. Uh, and so um, those are just some kind of little tips to help you when you do your things, because I realize y'all do a lot of stuff uh, here and that's that's really prepared you for doing some more things for your local community. You may have to try several things to uh, figure out what's going to work best for you. Not all things that work for one congregation is going to work for others. Be patient and things will work out for what's best. The main thing is is you're looking for that one soul who has an honest and humble heart. 
The fourth and last ingredient under context could be how we treat our visitors when they come through the door. What is the first thing um, that a visitor normally wants to do when they come through our doors? They normally want to find their seat, right? That is normally what they want to do. They don't want to be so overwhelmed by people. Um, they're, they're already nervous. <laughs> and so when we overwhelm them, um, that really makes them nervous. So one thing that we've learned is, is we let our visitors sit down. Um, and then we have those that are trained um, that will go and introduce themselves to them, get to know them, so that they can get that contact information. Because how many times do we have visitors walk in our door and then we have no information? Because a lot of times they're not going to fill out that card in the queue back in front of them, are they? They're just not going to do it. Uh, we, we've been noticing congregations putting up the QR code. So I asked some of them, I said, well, how is that working? They said, they're not doing that either. So we had to figure out, okay, how can we do this? So we decided um, that we would have those trained and they would go and sit next to them, not so close, you don't have to sit right on top of them. You can sit off to the side, in front of them, behind them, wherever, you know, um, to make them feel comfortable because we don't want to just um, um, make them feel uncomfortable we do, and we don't want to stand up over them either we want to be where they are um, and so um, I thought okay when a visitor comes in what can we what can we give them um, because ladies you know it is sometimes really hard to get in contact information from people they're very hesitant uh, so I thought, well, maybe giving somebody a gift, you know, might be a little bit easier um, to get that information. Um, now, if they do seem a little hesitant, because sometimes they will, because not everybody does like giving out their information, um, um, we always tell them we're a card-sending congregation and we love to send cards. Well, normally when you say that, oh, they're going to give you that information. So, um, in any of these things I'm telling you, talking to you about, um, that is a way that you can get their information if they seem to be uh, a little bit hesitant. And this is also an excellent way for you ladies to get together and make some bags um, uh, and assemble them. In Romans 16, 16, it reads, Salute one another with a holy kiss. The churches of Christ salute you. So, here again, um, I just go to the Dollar Tree, um, or you can, there are other ways you can get the bags cheaper now. Um, and so, um, but you get, I just get just a brown bag and I stencil welcome. Um, you know, there might be some girls here, women that know how to write beautifully. This may be their talent. Your children may want to do this. I know we did this at Jacksonville before we left our kids to decorate the welcome bag. Um, so there's a lot of ways that we as ladies can get involved in this work as well. And then I put things in it like a notepad and in your packet you will see um, that I give you the list of some things um, that you can put in the bag. A notepad. Now, if you have a notepad with the church's name on it, put that in there. If not, um, just get a, an address label and put, put, uh, put that on the back with the church's name and address and phone number on it. So they'll always remember where they got their notebook from. An ink pen. If you've got an ink pen with the church's name on it, put that in there. Uh, Kleenex. Hand sanitizer. Chapstick, lotion, gum, mints, and lastly, I like to get some kind of, it can be a cup, it can be a water bottle, it can be whatever. Um, but does anybody know what a cricket is? Okay, I'm seeing a lot of heads nodding. So you're probably going to know what I'm going to say. Go get the vinyl stickering, uh, put the logo in the church's name, 
put that on there on the front of this. It makes a really cute gift uh, for when our visitors come. And that's what we started doing as well um, in the American Mission campaigns. I would get a mug, and, and uh, most congregations have a certain logo, and then we put the church's name on it. And it, it turns out to be a really cute gift as well for them. And, uh, and then, as I said, um, you know, we get together and put these bags together. Um, now, when you get their address, um, it, whether, however you feel comfortable, you get their information or they get it, just make sure that everything is spelled right uh, and that you can read it because we don't want to send a lot of cards because this is, this is going to be a lot of card sending um, to a, the wrong address and then we have them sent back to us. So we want to make sure um, that we, we, we put the right address and make sure we spell their names correctly uh, as well. And then um, we, we normally um, will not print our list until Sunday afternoon because we want our visitors to go on our list because we want to immediately start sending them cards. We don't want to wait a full week and then start sending them cards thanking them for visiting. Um, we want to immediately get on that, uh, and so we want to have them on that list. Now, if you have visitors in the evening services, who, whoever's over the group can give you that information and you can uh, fill out cards for them as well. Um, here is El, um, Ellen and Perry. Uh, we had met them when we were um, at Jacksonville, and um, Rob noticed they were sitting uh, where they were sitting, and he says, Nicole, come on, I think there's a visitor. And as you can tell, when we meet our visitors, um, we always have that invitation to take them out to eat. And so um, uh, we we realized they were from the local community. We went and got us a bag and gave it to them and got their information so the congregation um, could send them cards. Um, and so I'll never forget when we met them, um, Rob is always trying to figure out, okay, what is the common interest? What are some things that we can do together? And it just so happened that that was a time, that that was a Sunday, that next um, Monday was going to be the um, championship football game because uh, Perry was a big Alabama fan. And so I'm feeling kicks under the table because it's my children saying, Mom, uh, Dad, be prepared. <laughs> he, he's going to be inviting them over. And, of course, I knew that was what he was going to do because, as I said, he's always trying to find something, some way that we can get together through the week as well. And so uh, he did. He invited him over, and um, uh, we um, watched the game together, got to know them a little bit more. And one of the things that we had learned was um, – uh, Perry had gone to a certain uh, denomination and she'd gone to a different one and they'd been going back and forth, back and forth to both of these denominations mm -hmm. and they told us, they said, we're just tired. They're not, they're getting further and further away from the Bible and we're tired of not getting uh, the truth anymore. And so, um, and so we said, well, that, that, piqued Rob's interest and he said well what brought you to the to the church here um, because if you know anything about Jacksonville we, we live the the um, church building is directly right across the street from JSU the college there and so our locals will not come on that side of town because it's very busy and so um, Rob asked him, said, well, what brought you to the congregation here? And I'll never forget what she said. In 1999, when we moved to Jacksonville, we started receiving house to house, heart to heart. Ladies, it took them 21 years to ever step foot into the building, but we're so glad they did because that gave us the opportunity to start building that relationship with them. 
and having those Bible studies uh, with them. Uh, we were able to baptize them both, uh, and then we were also able to baptize their son and daughter-in-law as well. Uh, one thing that we learned through uh, their conversion was um, we were able to get give them one of the visitor bags um, because and get their information and then the church did her job and, and uh, by starting to send those cards thanking them for visiting and, and welcoming them back. Um, they help us know who is visiting and who is a potential prospect for the Bible study. The first ingredient under prospects could be sending cards to those who are sick, someone who is maybe dealing with cancer, someone who's recently had surgery, someone that may just need some encouragement or lost a family member. On page 106 in your uh, Evangelism Simplified, you're going to find a list that says Finding Prospects. These are the people that we're looking for um, to show them that we care about them because we realize um, the doors of opportunity open and shut in everybody's lives um, that we know because not everybody right now is going to be ready for a Bible study, are they? We've got to wait until that time comes that, hey, this is a perfect opportunity um, that I think that we can start sending some cards to them. And so Rob gives you a list of 35 people that we're looking for um, so that we can put them on our contact list. It is important to show compassion to those who want to reach. Now I will explain some ways uh, we prospect all the contacts. In Jude 22 it reads, and of some have compassion making a difference. Um, one thing is, ladies, when you realize, hey, I think this person is ready to be put on our, our contact list, that's when we need your help. Get their information uh, so that we can start putting them on our list and we can start sending them cards to whatever um, we need to send cards for. Um, the, what we normally do, um, encourage through the school, is that the church is divided into groups um, depending on the size. I know at Willette we were over 300 we had six groups. Um, and so uh, it's not the same people every week doing uh, cards. And so um, we, would, we would, after services on Sunday evening, we would meet in the library. That was just a good place for us to meet. And we would, send, uh, we would fill out our cards there. Uh, now we normally would leave our, these um, names on here for at least th three to four weeks. Um, and sometimes, you know, they may come visit you because they're curious to who, who is this that's sending us all these cards. Um, but if not, we um, recommend to the school you do uh, a transition day. And those are some of the things you're going to learn more about um, from your elders as well. Now, one thing is when we do our cards, um, we don't want to send one card with 30 signatures. That's not effective, ladies. We want to make sure that everybody that's in our group, men, women, children, everybody is involved in this uh, work. And um, that way we know they're going to get a lot of cards. And we don't want to mail these cards all out on Monday morning. Say you get 30 cards, you want to space them out um, six cards a day. So that way they're getting cards every day in their mailbox and they're going to start looking forward to going to their mailbox and seeing the sweet kind of messages that you're writing uh, to them. When a person receives two to three cards in their mailbox, it will have a positive effect. Don't ever underestimate the power of a card. Um, in this picture, you're going to see Miss Tony Adams. Um, she had called the church office uh, again and uh, when she had received uh, house to house and um, this was uh, during COVID and she 
had just moved back to Alabama. She, moved, uh, she grew up in Alabama and got married and moved away for many years to Indiana. Well, she lost her husband, and so her siblings really, really wanted her to move back to Alabama. And so she did. And it was maybe two or three months after she moved back, COVID hit. Well, when COVID hit, she didn't hear high or dry from her family at all. They, were, they didn't want to have anything to do with her. And she, is, she was like, I can't stand this. I, it's going to kill me to stay in this house. It's going to kill me to get out of this house. I've got to get out. So she received house to house, and she called the secretary, and she said, she said, I see that y'all offer free uh, transportation to services, and she said, we do. And so um, we started picking up Miss Tony, and it just so happened that where she lived uh, was close to the assist, uh, associate preacher, um, Kate, and he was picking her up. And Kate, I will never forget, we were out on seminars, and Kate called us and said, Rob, there's this lady, and she's got so many questions, and I know I'm not supposed to answer them, but this is the hardest thing for me. He's a school teacher, so he's used to answering questions. And he says, I know I'm not supposed to answer, but this is really difficult. And so we said, well, when we get there, we'll, we'll, we'll go and pick her up and get to know her as well. And so we had a lot of the members picking her up and, and taking her out to eat, showing her the love of the congregation. Um, and um, it's, we, we, we started sending her cards, uh, thanking her for visiting. Um, uh, she, was, she was getting the love because she wasn't getting it any, anywhere from her family. And so uh, it was, we were able to do the first study with her, uh, and then she got COVID. It literally took her three months to come through COVID. But during those three months, Jacksonville did their job. We were sending cards to her. We were calling on her. We were checking on her. We were taking food to her door. Whatever Miss Tony needed, the church was going to be there for her. And so when she got to feeling better, she said, I'm ready. Can y'all start picking me up? Uh, I'm ready to come back to services. And so we started picking her up again. Uh, we were able to do the second and third study. And I knew that there was something there with Miss Tony because when we had done the survey with her in, in book one, um, we found out that she was sprinkled in the Salvation Army Church. It is the church. Um, one thing we did not know is that they practiced sprinkling. Um, that was new to us. Um, and so anytime baptism kept coming up, I could tell she was very apprehensive. And I wasn't sure what, what the problem was. Um, but when we got to book three, um, and she realized what she needed to do to become a Christian. Uh, she, I'll never forget, she looks at Rob and says, Rob, I know what I need to do, but I'm scared to death of water. So that was all the reason why she was so apprehensive. So Rob says, well, let me call Cade and, and we'll do this together. Um, that way we can get you, you know, you'll feel more comfortable with both of us on each side of you. And so he came, Kate came and helped Rob. And I'll never forget, of course, Rob told her, you know, close your eyes, close your mouth, we're going to do this very quickly. And uh, she said, okay. And so uh, I'll never forget, she was so nervous, she was shaking so bad, I felt so bad for her. But anyway, so he, they both get her down and uh, put her down into the water. Well, when she come up out of the water, she had opened her mouth when she went under. And I thought, oh no, this is not good. And she came up just coughing. I thought, oh no, Miss Tony has a wonderful um, personality. She, she's really funny because you never know what's going to come out of Miss Tony's mouth. And so I thought, what is she going to say? <laughs> And the first thing she said when she got pulled it together, she says, Rob, you tried to kill me. 
We love Miss Tony. She's a very special lady, um, and uh, everybody uh, loves her. Uh, and so, but one thing that we we learned um, from her conversion was was when she was receiving all the cards and the love that was shown to her. That was the first step towards the Bible study. The second ingredient under prospects could be when you see a visitor come in, always invite them out to eat. Now that's normally what we do at first when we get to know somebody. Because I know when I moved to Jacksonville, when I was in Tennessee, I didn't feel threatened because somebody at the congregation pretty much knew who they were. And so I, I didn't mind having them go ahead and having them into my home. But when we went moved to Jacksonville, and I didn't know anybody, and a lot of the congregation might not have known them either. So I thought, we said, well, let's just start taking them out to eat to get to know them. That way, um, they'll feel more comfortable with us as well and when we do invite them into our home. So that's what we encourage um, congregations to do now. They may not be able to do it that day because they have already plans. But you always tell them that that offer still stands when um, they visit again. In Luke 5, 30 through 31, it reads, But their scribes and Pharisees murmured against his disciples, saying, Why do you eat and drink with publicans and sinners? And Jesus answering said unto them, They that are whole need not a physician, but they that are sick. Even Jesus ate with sinners and publicans, and we need to, too. The impact this has on a visitor is usually one that they will never forget. They're not used to someone uh, inviting them out to eat. Um, it makes them feel like you truly care for them. What I would suggest is for you ladies to meet and come up with a plan for those who'd be willing to take a visitor out to eat and then eventually maybe even having them into your home. If you have them in your home, um, this is one thing I wish I had done more when I, when Rob and I were in full-time work. I wish I had gotten our ladies more involved in this. Um, yes, I had my children. They were a big, big help to me. But I, I really wish I had gotten some of the ladies to help with this as well, whether it's fixing a dessert, uh, whether it's helping you clean your house to get it ready. Um, it may be that they have small children. You may want to come in and help with those children. Uh, so they don't disturb the uh, Bible study. Um, it may be that some uh, a lady says, I want to come in and I'll put the food away and clean up the dishes so that you can go ahead and, and uh, do the study. So there's a lots of ways, ladies, that we can get involved um, in doing um, the Bible study. The more that we can get involved in evangelism, the more souls that we can save. Um, in this picture here, you see Miss Geneva, who Rob talked about last night. Um, she was always talking to me about Miss Margie, who was a neighbor of hers. And, um, and I, I finally one day said, Geneva, who is Miss Margie? And she said, well, she's my neighbor. She helps me with the girls. And I said, well, have you thought about asking her to come to services with you? And she said, I have. And I think when the opportunity comes, I'll, I'll invite her. And so it, was just, it just so happened that they were together one Sunday afternoon, and Geneva said, well, Margie, uh, me and the girls were going to go to services. Uh, and she stopped her and said, well, where do you attend? And she said, showed her and told her Jacksonville, and she said, oh. She says, isn't that the congregation that sends out the house to house, that publication? And she said, yes, it is. And she said, well, you know, I've been thinking about wanting to uh, visit there. And so she came with her. And um, so that's when it all started. We took her out to eat to get to know her. Um, and then, of course, um, as we were getting to know her, we were able to have her into our home uh, and do some Bible studies with her. And, uh, and uh, she uh, eventually did obey the gospel. But one thing with Miss Margie was a blessing that we had Geneva with us because um, some of the things that Geneva had gone through, Miss Margie was going through as well. So she was a big help in that study uh, to help us with that. And uh, so we're so thankful we had her to help us. Um, we have used this approach many times and have had many conversions doing so. 
Many of our converts have said, if we did not do this, they may not be Christians today. When we open our homes and take visitors out to eat, it can lead to a potential Bible study. The next most important ingredient under Bible studies could be someone who wants to be a teacher and someone who wants to be a silent partner. In 2 Timothy 2, 2, it reads, And the things that thou hast heard of me among many witnesses, the same commit thou to faithful men, who shall be able to teach others also. I realize, ladies, we're not all going to feel comfortable in teaching, but we can be a silent partner to help with the study. The teacher needs to learn a method and become very familiar with it. At first, um, when I started learning how to use Back to the Bible, I was always Rob's silent partner. It was not until our first mission trip to Jamaica that I conducted my first one. I can remember, ladies, how nervous I was um, in doing it, but I knew it was my time um, to do it. We definitely need more ladies to step up and become teachers and silent partners when teaching other women the gospel. I trained Hannah how to do one in Jamaica as well. She was my silent partner and was able to watch me so she could eventually do one as well. And I, I, one thing, um, she knew I always wanted her to do one, but I knew it was going to have to be her uh, idea. And I'll never forget uh, Sister Corinth Duncan in, in Sandy Bay, she was a preacher's wife, uh, came up to Hannah and said, there's a young lady that's been um, uh, visiting the, the congregation here and she's interested in doing a Bible study. Uh, would you be able, would you be willing to teach her the gospel? And uh, she told her she would, and of course I was her solid partner. And as you can tell, back to, Bi back to the Bible is very easy. And with Rob giving you the help of realizing you don't have to answer all their questions, that was a relief to me. Because <laughs> I didn't, I felt like, uh, what, what question are they going to ask me? Am I going to be prepared for it? So that, I think that was one of the things that I was most hesitant about in doing a Bible study was those questions. Um, so knowing that we didn't have to answer those questions, we could write those questions down and answer them later has been a big help to me. So um, Hannah agreed to do the Bible study, and uh, I was her silent partner, and uh, uh, she became a Christian. And at that time, we were going every two years, um, and the next time that we went back to Jamaica, the girl uh, is still a faithful member there on the island, and she came up to Hannah and says, Hannah, I've got a friend. Will you study with her as well? And so she studied with her, and I was her silent partner, and we were able to baptize her as well. Um, this is a great opportunity for mothers and daughters to work together in soul winning. Uh, my suggestion would be is to find out which of you ladies would want to be a teacher and who would want to be a silent partner. You never know when you may be asked to conduct one, and you will want to be prepared for when the time comes. We need ladies to be willing to teach a Bible study or one who will be a silent partner. Which one will you be? The most important ingredient under new converts is weekly mentoring. In Mark 1, 9 through 13, it reads, And it came to pass in those days that Jesus came from Nazareth of Galilee and was baptized with John in Jordan. And straightway, coming up out of the water, he saw the heavens opened and the Spirit like a dove descended upon him. And there came a voice from heaven saying, Thou art my beloved Son, in whom I am well pleased. And immediately the Spirit driveth him into the wilderness, and was there in the wilderness forty days, tempted of Satan, and was with the wild beast, and the angels ministered unto him. If Jesus was tempted after he was baptized, so will the new converts. We want them to become well-rounded so that they will always remain faithful. Um, we need your help with this work too, ladies. Whether there's been two women that have studied with a, 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 a woman, now we need somebody else to, to step into a role of mentoring uh, her. Um, and mentoring is, is very, very important. Um, this is one thing that we have learned through the years 
um, if we continue building this relationship and they're getting more connected with the congregation, um, the more likely they're going to remain faithful. Um, and so, um, if, if it's a husband and wife team that does this, um, it can be any of us. Um, whether it's getting together with them once a week, and that's what we encourage, uh, and have a, a class. Not only um, do we want them to have a class on Sunday and Wednesday, uh, we also want to do the mentoring as well. Because there are new converts, they're not ready for an adult class. They have got so many questions at this point, and, and when when their family members and their friends have learned that they've become Christians, they're going to get persecuted, ladies. It, it, they need you at this point in their life. Uh, it's very critical because if we don't uh, mentor them, we will lose them. And so that's why uh, we want to provide them uh, as many avenues as we can uh, to um, make sure that we are teaching them. Um, we use books like the Acts Word book by Brother Bobby Bates, um, Growing in Christ, uh, is an excellent um, book um, that is, it follows just like the um, Back to the Bible. Um, and and um, there's other books as well, The Beginning of Our Confidence, that deals more with your moral and doctrinal issues. Um, this is the um, using new converts a more um, private setting and discuss personal issues. As I said, most new, new converts are not going to ask those questions in a large um, adult class. We never want to give up on the new convert that we have worked so hard to convert. We know that the devil will work very hard to get them back. At Jacksonville, we would have those that were designated to be our keepers. And as I said, um, sometimes they would go into each other's homes uh, to do a lesson once a week. Uh, sometimes I realize that people sometimes are really busy. Um, if they're busy, um, talk to them every week. You might want to send them a DVD. Uh, uh, but, or not necessarily a DVD, but go to World Video Bible School and you know that they're struggling with something, send them one of those uh, clips about what they're struggling with. That's what we did with a, a, a couple um, that we converted at, at um, Jacksonville. They were always busy. They worked night shifts, so it was very difficult for us to get to them. They always had questions. So what Rob would do was with those questions, he would find a, uh, the topic, and usually, you know, Don Blackwell has got many of those questions. Get one of those, send it to them, let them watch it, get back with them sometime that week, see what they thought about it. Um, so those are just different little ideas of ways that you can um, uh, do the mentoring. This will help to build a close relationship with the new converts. The more they connect with the members, the less likely they're going to leave the church. We have had much success with our converts remaining faithful when we have people assigned to be keepers. In summary, there are eight ingredients to bringing souls to Christ. We can begin by learning how to knock doors, make and deliver new movers' baskets, do some kind of community outreach hand out visitor bags, sending cards to those in our community, take the visitors out to eat or have them in your home, teach a study, or be the silent partner, or lastly, help keep the saved safe. I hope and pray that these things that you have learned will help you in your congregational evangelism. And ladies, I know I have thrown out a lot of information to you. Uh, tonight, Rob will be meeting with the elders, and they will get the curriculum. And so, I just wanted to prepare you for what you're going to be hearing and talking about. So, y'all are ready for when the elders say, okay, we're ready to go on this. Um, and so, I leave you here with my cell phone number and my email. Please feel free uh, to re reach out to me with any questions. 
Um, I love to hear from y'all. Um, and if you're if you've got a question about anything that you're doing, please feel free to uh, contact me. And, and um, as I said, this is this is going to take a, a little bit to get this flowing. Uh, but once you've got it, it it's, it's really works well. And we know that we're going to hear good things from this congregation. Uh, tomorrow you will be starting to receive Reaching the Lost in your email. And so you're going to learn very quickly, and you're going to get to see how exciting this work is to us because this is we get to see this in action every week and how these congregations are taking the things that we're teaching and they're going out into their communities and they're um, converting many lost souls to Christ. And we pray that that will happen here at Chapel Hill. And um, I know um, that y'all can do this. And we thank you so much for having us uh, here the last three days. I know that it's tiring. <laughs> we have thrown out a lot of information. But please feel free at any time reach out to me or Rob, um, and, and we will help you in any way that we can. But thank you so much. But let's close with a word of prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for this and another beautiful day that you've given to us and for these past few days that we've had to learn more about getting out into our community and and figuring out ways that we can um, teach the lost and, and we pray that these techniques that they learn that they will do them and that many lost souls will be added to the church here at Chapel Hill and we pray for all those um, that are here this evening and we pray that um, as they leave that um, they have a safe journey home and that, that they will become, be able to come back safely the next appointed time. And we thank you so much for all the many blessings that you've given to us. And we pray that we never take those things for granted. And we just pray that um, doors will be open, that we can study with the community here at Chapel Hill. And forgive us of our sins. And please help us to be the kind of Christian women that you want us to be, always having a shining light to those that were around. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.